So I'm here at this pod point destination charger with the Max Green 10 meter Type 2 to Type 2 cable. I'm give, gonna give you another chance to enter the draw to win this cable later on in the video, so keep watching for that. If you're new to EVs, you're probably wondering which type of cable you need to buy for your vehicle. And in this video, I'm hoping to answer those questions by explaining all the different options and helping you pick the right one. First of all though, I'm gonna get plugged in and get charging and then I'll tell you more. So that's us plugged in and charging. Now let's have a chat about which cable is the right one for you. So you want to buy a charging cable for your EV and the choices you have are a little bit bewildering and you're trying to find your way. There are a few options that you're going to be faced with and I'm going to try and guide you through the process. So there's what you actually need one of these cables for and whether it's worth buying one. There's the connector type and how you choose the right one. The power rating three phase or single phase, and the length. So first of all, why do you even need a charging cable like this in the first place? Well, if you have an untethered home charger, then you'll need a cable to connect the car to the charger. And a lot of public chargers at destinations like supermarkets, gym car parks, workplaces, will be untethered public chargers that you need your own cable to use. If you don't have a cable, you won't be able to charge. If your car doesn't come with a charging cable, then it will be supplied with, say, the, the three pin to type two or three pin to type one, where you can plug into a standard household socket and charge. But if you need to use a public charger or you've got an untethered home charger, you're gonna find that you're out of luck and you need to buy a cable. So that's the reason why this would even be of interest to you at all. If you're never gonna use chargers in those scenarios, it, it's probably not worth spending the money. But personally, I like knowing there's one in the boot, so if I ever find myself somewhere unexpectedly that I can plug in and charge, like at a supermarket or at work or at a client site I'm visiting or whatever, then I can do that without having to worry because I know I've got the cable, I know I'm good to go. Next up, the connector type. Now, one end of the cable will always be type two. The socket that you're plugging into on the wall or on the charging post will be type two. It's the other end, the end that goes into the car, that takes some consideration. There are two types of cable commonly sold in Europe, and that is type one or type two. And you need to know which one is for your car. A type one cable tends to be for cars like older Nissan Leafs, so the first generation Leaf, the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, the Citroen C0, the Peugeot Ion, and the Mitsubishi Aimeev all use type one. And there, there are possibly more as well, but those are the big ones I can think of. And for those, you will need a Type 2 to Type 1 cable. And that's very important that you get the right type for your car. The vast majority of other EVs are Type 2. And that means you need a Type 2 to Type 2 cable. And that's by far the most common type that's available. So make sure you pick the right one. If you're unsure which cable type you need for your car, either have a look at the charging port, because they do look very different, or... Podpoint have a very good sort of database of EVs on their website. There's a link in the description. Look up your car and it should show you which type of connector you need. Next up, the power rating. You'll have two choices when it comes to looking for a cable, 16 amps or 32 amps. And that will again depend on your car. For example, this Kangoo ZE that I'm sat in at the moment can only charge at 3.6 kilowatts, which is 16 amps, therefore a 16 amp cable would be sufficient for this van. But they are backwards compatible, so a 32 amp cable works absolutely fine with this van, and you don't need to buy a 16 amp one just because you have an older vehicle that charges slower. The vast majority of newer EVs charge at the full 32 amps, seven kilowatts, and therefore a 32 amp cable is what you'll need. I would recommend personally that you always buy a 32 amp cable, because if you buy a 16 amp cable now because that matches your car, you might save a little bit of money, but in the future, if you change your vehicle to something that needs the faster charging, you're going to have to buy another cable. So I would stick with a 32 amp cable because that's much more future proof and you're going to have to buy one once and you can just take it with you to every new car that you have. Maybe if you have a Type 1 car and a 16 amp cable is cheaper, that might do you because your next EV probably won't be Type 1. That choice is definitely up to you.
single phase or three phase. And this is a choice you will often be faced with when you're buying a cable. The vast majority of EVs on the market charge at seven kilowatts single phase. And so a single phase 32 amp cable will be sufficient for them. But there are some uh, like the Renault Zoe, which will charge a lot faster. They charge up to 22 kilowatts on three phase. And so you, to take full advantage of the charging speed, you'll need a three phase cable. Now to find out what the maximum charging speed is that your vehicle supports, again, I recommend the PodPoint website. If you look up your vehicle, you can see what the maximum charging speed is that it supports. And that might influence your decision on whether you buy a single phase or a three phase cable. Now, again, this could be an opportunity to future proof by buying a three phase cable. But if the vehicle you have only charges at seven kilowatts on single phase and you want to save a little bit of money and it also makes the cable a little bit lighter, three phase cables can be heavy. That is a choice you're going to have to, it's going to be up to you really. It's going to be your budget and your desire for it to be a bit, maybe a bit lighter weight that's going to decide which one of those is best for you. Next up then is the length. They tend to be sold in 5 meter or 10 meter lengths. You sometimes get 3 meter cables, you sometimes get 7.5 meter cables. And ultimately it's all going to depend how far you're going to have to park from where you're going to have to plug in. For most normal circumstances, a 5 meter cable is the standard. It's the standard length, it's what you tend to get supplied with vehicles that come with them. It's what a dealership will tend to sell you if you want to buy one of their cables. So like with my MG ZS, I bought a cable from the dealership when I bought the car, it was a five meter cable and it was sufficient. Most of the time it was absolutely fine. Quite a lot of people like the 10 meter length because if you're in situations where you're prone to finding the charge point you want to use blocked, either by someone that inconsiderate in a petrol or diesel car that just thinks they can park where they like, or even worse, EV drivers that park up at charging points and don't even plug in, then perhaps you could park a space or a couple of spaces over and run, still run the cable to the point. And, you know, if you're really riled up by it, you can maybe even block them in and, and plug in that way. But I definitely wouldn't condone that. That's, um, you know, definitely a way to, to have some confrontation in your life. And I wouldn't recommend it. So the 10 meter cable or longer could be advantageous to you. It does cost a little bit more. Uh, so I think if you look at the max green range, so the type 2 to type 2 32 amp cables, like the 10 meter one that I've got here to review. Uh, the 5 meter one is about £149. And the... 10 meter one is 189 pounds, so about 40 pounds more, and it's definitely up to you whether you think that is worth the extra money. But here's a quick demonstration of just how useful the extra length can be. So just how big an advantage does the 10 meter cable give you? As you can see, I'm parked quite far away from the charger. So if you could imagine maybe someone's iced the space here, and there's a few more cars parked there, and you've had to abandon your van there and hope that you can still charge. Well, the 10 meter cable will get you out of trouble. Let's have a look. And as you can see, it reaches no problem. So I think that in itself makes it a bit of a no brainer. If you're looking to buy a charging cable, you might as well make it a 10 meter one. And I think that's everything you need to decide which cable is the best one for you. I do hope this has been helpful. So if you want a chance to win this 10 meter type two to type two cable from Max Green, all you need to do is make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment using the hashtag Max Green 2. If you watched the first video, you could probably have predicted that one. At the end of the month, I'm gonna pick a winner from all of the videos that feature this competition. One lucky person is gonna get this cable sent to them. I can only take entries from people within the UK. If you're elsewhere in the world, unfortunately, I'm not able to ship this cable to you, but if you're interested in buying one, there's an Amazon link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.